Welcome back to Italian Military Archives. In this video, we will take a look at the famous Littorio class, the only series of battleships designed and built by Italy prior to World War II. We will take a look at their design and technical specifications, while their operational history will be covered in a second video. On paper, these ships were built within the boundaries of the Washington Naval Treaty, with a maximum standard displacement of 35,000 tons. However, this limit was quickly exceeded as their construction went on. In the resurgent escalation of naval construction of the early 1930s, the Littorio class was the Italian response to the construction of the second Dunkirk class battle cruiser by the French Navy which in turn was the answer to the new Deutschland-class pocket battleships built by Germany. You can check my video on the interwar naval policy to get more details on this matter. Two ships were ordered and laid down in 1934, the Littorio in Genova and the Vittorio Veneto in Trieste. In 1938, two additional units, Roma and Impero, were laid down, causing quite some headache to the French Navy. Let's explore now more in depth the Littorio class by looking at three different aspects armament, protection, and peculiar features. The maximum caliber allowed by the naval treaties was 406 mm. However, Italy had never developed or was in the process of developing any guns of this kind. Developing such weapons from scratch would have seriously delayed the construction of the Littorios. The most obvious solution was to design a new version of the 381mm guns originally built during the Great War for the never completed super dreadnoughts of the Caracciolo class. The new guns were designed to have extremely high velocity. The reason for this was to grant the guns the same penetration power as the 406mm guns. They also had a very long range, in line with the practice of the Italian Navy to engage the enemy from afar. However, the high velocity feature had detrimental effects on the shell dispersion in addition to other factors that we will see in the second video. The high velocity had another drawback, which was the reduced lifespan of the barrels. After around 110-120 rounds were fired, the guns had to be rebarreled. The Littorios ended up equipped with 9 381mm guns in three triple turrets, two forward and one aft in a super firing position, granting a quite wider firing arc. The secondary armament consisted of 12 152mm guns in four triple turrets, the same armament of the Duca degli Abruzzi class cruisers. The main drawback of these excellent guns was their maximum elevation of 45 degrees, which meant that they could be used for AA fire only against torpedo bombers flying low. The main AA armament consisted of 12 90mm guns, 6 per side, supplemented by an array of smaller 37 and 20mm guns. To fire all these weapons, the Littorios relied on a quite large number of fire direction stations and range finders, coincidence and stereoscopic ones. Here I will recall very briefly how a battleship fires with its main guns, utilizing the above-mentioned equipment. Essentially, the fire director identified the target, the range finders identified the distance and its course. These data were then processed by the fire control computer that in turn communicated elevation and bearing to the main battery, which fired upon the order of the fire director. To get a much more detailed overview of how this process works, check Drakenifel's video on the subject. Speaking of vertical protection, the armor scheme of the Littorios differed from that of its contemporaries. Instead of a single piece of armor, 350mm thick, they had the main armor belt of 280mm plus an additional 70mm decapping plate on the exterior, separated by a 25mm gap from the main plate filled with cellular concrete. 
This composite armor scheme was already present in the original project of the early 1930s. A series of experiments completed in 1935 convinced the designer of the Littorios, Umberto Pugliese, of the effectiveness of this solution, giving the final go for its implementation on the two ships under construction. The horizontal protection consisted of three different armor decks of different thickness, the upper deck with a 36 armor plate for decapping enemy shells. The main deck had a 12 mm plate of extra resistant steel, while the gun deck had a varying level of thickness ranging from 90 to 150 mm, depending on the area considered. Tests carried out in the 1930s showed that such defense could do little to fend off hits from bombs above 480 kg launched at steep angles. Although the events of World War II showed that no battleship was immune to such threat. Another distinctive feature of the Littorios was their torpedo defense system, also known as the Pugliese system. It consisted of a void cylinder surrounded by water put inside a larger cylinder. The water inside the system would have absorbed the force of the torpedo explosion causing the void cylinder to crack, pouring inside the void spaces. In theory, this system would have preserved the hull from devastating damages. The cylinders protected the underwater section of the citadel, running for 120 meters, and the diameter was reduced towards the two ends, making these sections more vulnerable. Their effectiveness is still debated today, and there will hardly be a definitive answer. I will try to talk more about this and going through the evaluation of the battle damages in the second video. The Littorio class implemented another unique solution with respect to the rudder arrangement. The main rudder was placed in the extreme stern, while two auxiliary rudders were placed 25 meters towards the bow, one per side. This feature meant that a crucial hit to the main rudder would have not compromised the maneuverability of the ship. If you're wondering if the Bismarck had a rudder arrangement similar to the Litorios, it would have probably escaped its chases and survived Operation Rheinhubung. The battleships were equipped with a pair of catapults placed on the stern section, operating three Imam RO-43 seaplanes, the standard aircraft employed by the Regia Marina on its ships. It is interesting to note that the first project designs envisaged a couple of catapults placed amidship, or even a short flight deck on the stern operating a pair of autogyros La Cerva. These were curious aircraft tested by the Regia Marina in the early 1930s. In 1942, each battleship received a couple of long-range Reggiane RE-2000 fighters that could be launched from the catapult. It is quite known that the Italians did not develop any radar devices, at least in time for making any substantial use of them in World War II. In the summer of 1941, an experimental device was installed on the battleship Littorio, but trials at sea occurred in the second half of the year did not earn satisfactory results. Works and tests continued and only in 1943 the new Italian radar, called EC3 Ter, was installed on the three Littorios. However, the course of events, and especially the signing of the armistice between Italy and the Allies, meant that these devices were never used in combat. I hope you have enjoyed this technical overview on the Littorio class battleships. Stay tuned for the second video covering the operational history of these battleships. As always, sources are in the description, together with the links to my social media pages. Please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. Good luck and fair seas!